Hello. Hope everyone's doing good today. It's a good day. I feel good. The sun is shining. The weather is sweet. Yes. You make you want to move your dancing feet to the rescue. Here I am. Want you to know ya. Can you understand? Bob Marley. You know, it was his birthday. Just recently, beginning of February. I think it's the day before me, but I'm not quite sure. I always get that wrong. I said happy birthday once to him. I was on this Indian reserve, native reserve. And uh, I all of a sudden remembered that it was Bob Marley's birthday. So I just shouted it out, rolled down the windows. And I was like, happy birthday, Bob Marley. And a fucking, yeah, a snowball hit the ground from a tree. You wouldn't, oh my God. I, I, some of this stuff I would never believe if my sister wasn't there, but, and also my sister, like I forget a lot of things like synchronicities that happen like that because they happen so often that a lot of times my sister or I will remember the story, but usually not both. And she was right there and that snowball, cause I wasn't driving, she was driving. So I don't know who saw it. I think I did. And it looked like this tree right in front of us fucking hooked it and just smoke right in the middle of the windshield. And actually, I believe we both jumped back and took a, because it scared us. And we were like, was that Bob Marley? Like, did he just throw a snowball at us? Probably. Wouldn't surprise me. Spirit is a funny, 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 fickle thing, you know? What do we want to say other than my hair is shedding? Oh, why? Why? Why is this motherfucker just got to show up all the time? Ugh. Gross. <gasps> Ooh. No. Oh, actually, I really like this. You know what I'm getting? So we got it, the Candyman, and Poltergeist. With the devil. And what I'm getting is, ooh, hoo, hoo, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, what I feel like, um, I feel like, once I get this cart, okay, there we go. Okay, so my immediate reaction is somebody has tricked the devil to the other side. Okay, so when the devil is fucking around when the devil's doing shit. Okay. Obviously there's some type of possession slash takeover. This possession could last for fucking years, decades in somebody. Okay. Keeps them in a low vibration, keeps them controlled, keeps them on some type of substance abuse, keeps them basically, um, in a very negative, like, like frame of mind, life, right? Very negative shadow, okay? I feel like Okay, now I'm getting rough hands by Alexis on fire. Okay, so maybe, okay, what I'm getting is maybe somebody's told you this. Maybe somebody said like, you know, people aren't supposed to drink that much. Uh, people aren't supposed to do that that much, you know, like that's not, that's more than in moderation, you know, maybe somebody told you that that's not healthy and then something clicked like, you know what? I don't really think that is healthy. And, but you know, people can tell you something for years and years and years, but until it actually lines up with your thinking and your frame of mind, you're never really going to hear it, care, understand, walk away from it, you know, whatever, right? It has to like, it has to level with you, basically put it that way. So I feel like somebody has, has convinced, has tricked with this, uh, it energy has actually tricked, uh, the devil into going to the other side. And I don't think the devil realized 
right? It was like maybe somebody, um, you know, went, it would be like this. It's, say it's an alcoholic, okay? And this all of a sudden this person's realizing this is not for me. You know, like they, they wake up in the bar and they're like, what the fuck? Like, what am I doing here? This isn't my life. This isn't where I want to be. And then what they do is like the devil goes to the bathroom, right? Or the devil goes and talks to somebody and they sneak away. And then they put somebody else in their seat. So then the devil doesn't even notice that they're gone because they replace them with somebody else. It could be something like that. Or it's like they replace their drinking right away with something else, right? So then it left the devil at the liquor store or something like that, you know? It left them on the other side of something. They're now, they're now trapped. They can't come back. Right. Like, like Cindy can't just come or Carol Ann just can't come back. Right. She's trapped there. So her parents have to physically go in to the underworld to get her back. Right. So that's why I feel like in, in order for this devil to be able to get you back. Right. You have to succumb to his demise and you just walked away from it. So why would you go back? Right. And, you know, I was listening to this one Slain song and, um, I think it's called do what you love. And, um, he goes, uh, he goes, cause I've been sober over a year today and it only gets better from here. They say, and he stopped drinking. Like he used to drink a lot, like Slain drank a lot and he convinced himself that that was the life that he wanted. And it really wasn't. It was a life that trapped him. It was a life that he felt comfortable in because he was so uncomfortable in life. Right? He had to, you know, and, and then once you get money, it's like then he got money and then there was nothing stopping him from drinking all day at that point, right? There was nothing stopping him from gambling all day and doing these awful things because he had the funds to do it. He had to lose everything again almost, which is what a lot of these artists have to go through is they, they get to the top and then they have to go back to the bottom again because they ruin it. And, you know, they, they're not, no one's ever going to say that you only get one shot at something. But if you want that second shot, it's going to take you a lot more than what the first shot did. And that's maybe why, oh yeah, in my last video I was talking about how now you're going to see ads with these readings because now we've reached the second partnership on YouTube and it took me, I've been uh, with this channel now for 19 months and just made partner when my last channel hit like six, seven years, maybe 10 years. I don't know how long ago. Anyways, a while ago, um, it took me where I got 19 months now, two months to get to then. Like I was YouTube partner already getting paid within like less than 60 days of my channel debuting on YouTube. So when you have to go back around and do it again, you fight a lot harder for it and there's no problem with it. It's like, Oh yeah, well, whatever. And then you know how much you really want it. Right. And I feel like, I feel like once you get this devil on the other side, right. Then do you know how hard you're going to have to work to keep them over there? But you have to work hard every day anyways. So what's the difference? Like, you know, people want to slack off because they want to get lazy. Um, there's no, you know, when you need to be lazy, when you're laying in bed, going to bed, that's when you be lazy, but there's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of things that have to get done every day. And like to just give up on yourself says that you give up on everything, but to get the, to get the devil on the other side. And then in order to just keep them there, yeah, you got to do some work, but at least you don't have to do the work to get them over there again. You just have to do the work to keep them there. And then eventually it's not work at all because I've been sober over a year today and it only gets better from here, they say, because the more control you have of it, the easier and easier and easier it gets. It's not hard to do, right? Like once I quit smoking, it wasn't hard to keep it out of here now. 
I, I don't care for it at all. I would never even think about taking a drag of a smoke. I don't care because I don't want it anymore. If you still want something, then yeah, you keep the devil on that side. But once you get over it and you don't want it anymore, like, I mean, cigarettes could be sitting right in front of me. They could be sitting right here and I'd just be like, ugh, gross. Get them off. You know, like, it doesn't even bother me to look at them, but I'm still going to look at them and say gross every time. Even though I still kind of like the smell of them. Doesn't mean I don't want to taste them. Right? Doesn't mean I don't want them all up in my grill. Oh, like, fuck, that's a fast reading. Um, Honestly, there's some really, really nice advice coming in store with this. Honestly, the universe is, um, like, you're really, you're going to go beyond this problem, okay? And that's why you've got the devil on that side. He's going to stay on that side, okay? Um, honestly, one thing to maybe incorporate, I don't know if you smoke weed, but it might be a huge benefit to your life. It does wonders for my pain. It does wonders for my stomach lining. I have Crohn's and my stomach is a mess a lot and I can't eat and I get nauseous. Um, weed really helps to calm my stomach. It helps me be able to eat. It helps me be able to calm down. Weed and its medicinal purposes, especially if you, if you get a really low THC. I mean, a lot of this is like micro dosing. You know, you can take a hit of weed, a hit just a hit and it could change your life always be careful you know weed it does cause lung damage it does those things you know it's not 100 percent pure and healthy but it is a natural way to go about health with problems okay um so the, cho the choices are yours. You know, the choices are endless with how you keep the devil on the other side. But um, they're also kind of saying the more that you create, the better. Okay. Um, keeping a good solitude as well um, is also recommended. So try not to share your energy too much with people. Okay. Um, keep it to yourself, you know, like you don't have to stretch yourself out. I'm also getting, I don't know if maybe somebody should make some weed butter. Um, weed butter is so amazing. Okay. Uh, you can put that butter into a lot of things. Um, I really loved making brownies brownies. I found, uh, like the chocolate cut the taste of the weed, right? Because weed butter is very strong and it can taste really strong. But if you cut it in brownies, it's not as strong. It's not as, and it's still be as potent, but not as strong, like tasting. I feel like that could be the key to something is, um, connecting with a softer side. Like you, like once you smoke weed, I feel like a lot of the devil doesn't want anything to do with you. Like a lot of the things that get people, it, it seems it's still hard to resist a lot of things, but it, like I said, it just gets easier and easier and easier to do. It really does. But weed is, weed is a very healthy and it's a very natural thing to do, which is why a lot of doctors are going into the weed business. They're going into the weed wagon. They're realizing that the benefits of marijuana are huge when it comes to sickness and it comes to raising people's spirits, raising your vibration, keeping you away from negative energies, connecting with yourself. Like we changed my life. I didn't start smoking weed until I was 27 years old. And I will say that until the day I die, once I started change, once I started smoking weed, it changed my life. And I only started to I only started smoking weed is the guy I was dating at the time, um, had a really hard time sleeping. So he would take a, uh, sleeping pill 
And then because his body wasn't calm, but the sleeping pill was active, his body thrashed a lot and it would keep me awake. So he started getting, you know, little grams of weed here and there and getting me to smoke it before bed. And it would just knock me out. Like it was, it was amazing. Like what, what it did. And then I got hooked on phonics and I haven't stopped smoking weed since. And I probably never will. Right. It got me away from a lot of my demons. It freed me from a lot of things. So, I mean, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If it doesn't resonate with you and it's not your type of energy, then don't take it. Um, I'm not a weed expert. I'm not, I'm just a weed activist, to be honest. I love talking about it. I love supporting it. I love what it does. Um, it's a great, uh, weed is just a great thing. I'd be lost without it. I wouldn't even know what to do. I'd be an alcoholic if I couldn't be a pothead, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not even really a pothead. Like I smoke weed throughout the day, but like, it's not like so hard that I'm like comatose in my bed sleeping like ever. So, you know, there's a lot of choices, but the first thing that you really have to choose is the act. The act is everything. The act sets the tone for how you're going to do this. So once you initiate the act, then you go above and beyond. And that's where you start to solitude yourself. You start taking yourself away from the things that are enticing to you, right? Like Heather in the woods with the Blair Witch, you know, they're sitting around the campfire and Mike goes, or Josh goes, Heather, what's your favorite thing to do on the weekends? And she goes, well, it was, and used to be go take a hike. But now, uh, I don't really think that that's going to be the case anymore. Right. Because sometimes, you know, the woods almost killed her. Right? Do you think she's going to want to go leisurely fucking fuck around in there anymore? No, she's going to find something else to do and stay away from the fucking witch in the woods. Right? So, that was a nice reading. I hope it resonates with somebody. If it doesn't, like I said, don't worry, man. Maybe that's what Bob Marley started off this reading. You know, he was a huge weed advocate huge actually i was watching this uh, interview with this man um who works with snoop dog um he does uh some type of technician for him and uh this man is a white man he's like a 45 year old white man and he caught his daughter smoking weed and he went and talked to snoop about it. he's like snoop man can i talk to you about something and snoop's like yeah man you come talk to me and he's like all right i caught my daughter smoking weed and he's like, all right, all right. Like, how old is she? And he's like, 15. He's like, well, you know, is she like, is she a good, good student? Is she a good person? He's like, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I got any problems with her. Like, she's great. And he's like, well, then fucking take the diaper off. Like, fucking leave her alone. You know, like, there's a lot of other things that she could be doing. And she's got to explore. She's got to experiment. She's got to do things now. She's opening up to being, you know, she's a young adult. You can't strap on the fucking parenting whip and, you know, give her a good licking because she's smoking weed. Like, fucking smoking weed. If I, My God, I wish my parents would have had me smoking weed younger. Like, I would have, it would have just, oh my God, it would have changed my life. I would have never drank. I would have never cared. I would have been down a totally different road than what I'm at right now. If my parents had just let me fucking and introduced me to weed and not alcohol. Like, oh my God, that's the alternative is alcohol. Fuck that. So yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm going to peace out. Thanks for watching. Uh, personal readings, Whitney Moonshine at gmail.com. If not, just enjoy the channel. Um, thank you so much for everybody that writes in and the emails and the comments. And you know what? We're making it. We're still climbing. We're still growing. So um, if you like this video, please make sure you do actually like it down below. Uh, it does change my ratings. Surprisingly, I know it seems stupid because it is, but anyways, um, yeah, peace out. Have a great day. It's sunny as fuck here so i hope it's sunny where you are namaste peace out word to your mothers